What's up, what's up, family? Here we go again. Another BBG brother dead. Police shot him. Yeah, I call them BBGs now. Baltimore bad guys. Yeah, this brother right here was in a truck with a sister, man. He got pulled over. Decided to take off on the police and tell the police, you can't pull me over. And took off. And the chase was on. So, yeah, man. What I want to do, man, is just send a message out to the young brothers, man, that think being a gangster is something cool, something slick. But I'm going to tell you what you're going to find out, because I'm going to keep posting these videos. There's only two places a gangster end up. That's jail or dead. Now, we're going to find out with this Billy Lewis Rucker, 33 years old. We're going to find out how his gangster story ended. First of all, this is the gun the brother had. Yeah, it's raggedy as hell. Got tape on it. And uh, when the police was chasing him, the clip fell out the damn thing. So, he had one bullet left in the chamber, so the police say. And uh, he supposedly fought on the police. And the police banged back several times, taking the brother to his early grave. So, yeah. Then he also had a, a, a toy gun on him. Probably was a pellet gun. That he had in a bag in a truck, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you all that. This is the gun that was recovered, um, and this is the magazine that was recovered. The magazine again was uh, dropped at some point during this pursuit, and we have that, and we'll show you that. And it was still around chambered that was discharged in this gun. Uh, we believe this actual. Uh, crack in the gun up here was actually from the police officer shooting at him and it hit that. That's what we believe at this point. So now y'all see, he said the little crack, the little hole up in the gun right there is where the, uh, the police shot at him. They believe that the gun, that the bullet struck his gun and, uh, and, and cause that damage to the gun right there. Now, I brought that up because I want to make a point later on. So that's a 9 millimeter um, handgun. And this is a replica firearm that he had in a, back, a bag that he had with him. Um, so this was also recovered. The one that he used was the previous one. This one was in a bag of his property that he had with him. Okay, fam. This is the initial police stop. Now, that street that they on right now is Westwood. I'm familiar with that street because my girlfriend's daughter lives on that block right there. Hopefully, there wasn't no kids out there, fam. What they did, the shooting didn't go down right there, but he pulled off. He pulled off on the police in that block right there. So this is the initial stop. To somebody's death. So um, let's go on with the video. So he pulled off, so y'all can't stop me, and he takes off. So at this point, the suspect says, y'all can't stop me, floors the vehicle, and takes off. Yeah, and now, so they chased them all through the neighborhood, and he pulled off at one, one point. And uh, the brother, and he had a young lady in the truck with him, which we didn't see. But both of them got out and took off. Now, the police didn't chase him in the car. 
That's how they was able to pull over somewhere and get out. But the fox trot was on a butt. And if anybody don't know what fox trot is, that's the helicopters. And they had the infrared <coughs> cameras and they just showed up more like like it was daytime. So they chased them all through the neighborhood and they ran into a building, right? The helicopter seeing everything. He ran into the building. Then it came out. I mean, they should have stayed in the damn building. But they came out. The helicopter seen them. So this is the officer right here that pulled up on them with the body with the body cameras. Stay back here. Stay back here. Barely see. Say, get on the ground on the street. So you're going to see this is a slowed down version. Again, once he jumped that fence, that's when that magazine was dropped. And you're going to see once they get in the grassy area again, we're able to slow it down enough. You can actually see the muzzle flash from the suspect towards the officer. So I thought that he probably thought that he still had more ammunition on him, but he didn't, fortunately enough. We are extraordinarily fortunate once again that we didn't have an officer shot last night. They were basically at point blank range, but you'll see he kind of shoots and he hadn't gotten completely turned around enough, thankfully, because the bullet missed the officer. One of the officer's supervisors who was right there in the area actually went and started checking the officer because he thought that he was shot when he saw it. So you'll see the muzzle flash right there, and then it'll, it'll, I think it comes up again here. Now, this the flash I was talking about. Uh, now, earlier he said that he thinks that that, that that damage to the gun, or the suspect gun, possibly came from the police um, firearm striking his. But now what he's trying to say is that that spark right there is from the suspect shooting at the police. But it's kind of strange to me that it looks like the, the sparks is going downwards. Now, I haven't fired too many guns in my time at night. Right? But I would think that common sense. Common sense would tell you that the sparks wouldn't be going down. You know, so I'm not saying that the police lying. But... It's a possibility that that spark came from the police bullet striking the suspect's gun, right? But it's my, what he's saying might be true. But anyway, my point is the police ended up shooting that guy. They say they don't know how many times he shot. The, but the point is the brother's dead right now. So my point there's two you young brothers out there, man, that want to be gangsters. Think carrying guns is something slick. There's only two places you're going to end up, I'm telling you. It's either in jail or in prison. And this also reminds me of um, the Nation of Islam when uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who was the leader of the Nation of Islam, told the members not to carry weapons. Because if it was a war to break out, you're not going to win against the police. The, the weapons you got cannot match the police. Now, anybody in their right mind think they want to take a shot at the police, man, with just one damn raggedy-ass gun, you got to be out your mind or you got to have a death wish. Ain't nothing slick about that. But it was a movie that was out about these bank robbers in California. I think they had an all-out war with the police. But they end up dying, I believe. 
still. But they had mad ammunition, man. I think they took out a lot of police. But the outcome was they still died. You cannot match the police, man. So I suggest if you think carrying guns is something slick, man, you need to check history, man. Go watch some old movies like Scarface. See what happened at the end of Scarface. You can you can glamorize all the cocaine and all the money and, and, and all that stuff all you want. All the women, all the flashy cars. But your brother ended up dead at the end. Shut up. So, if you don't want to end up dead or in jail, man, please put the guns down, man. You can't win. I done seen so many stories, man, where people just want to put out guns, man, like it's something slick, like they've been watching too many goddamn John Wayne movies. They even had a white boy on a bus. He had two guns. Yeah, but guess where he's at? He's dead also. So, young man, this your Uncle Database. Put the guns down. Live your life, man. Live a long life, man. You don't want to go out like that. Come on, man. This shit is sad, really. But I'm going to keep posting these videos, and hopefully enough of you young brothers can watch some of these videos, man. I hope it start catching on so you can look at this and say, damn. Man, I don't want I, I thank God, man. My father talked me out of wanting to carry guns. Yeah. So, peace and love to my little young brothers, man. Leave them guns alone, man. Live your life. I'm out.